This is going to be the last strategy I'm going to show you as far as factoring a quadratic trinomial where a is not equal to 1. And we're going to call this method the AC method. All right, it's going to look very similar. It's, it's based on the same principles, but it's a little weird. I would say out of all of them, this has the most math magic in it. Um, so it may not be good if, if, you, if it has to make sense to you. And I'll show you why it works, but some, some people just don't like it because it's, it's not intuitive. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just show you how, how to do it, and then I'm going to show you why it works. Okay, so first step, we're going to multiply the, the lead coefficient, um, so the number in front of the x squared, times the constant term, the last term, and we're going to remove the leading coefficient. So here's how that looks. So I'm going to take the 2 times the 12, and then I'm going to just rewrite this as x squared plus 11x plus 24. So this 24 came about because we did 2 times the 12. And notice that this is no longer there. Okay? Obviously, that's an illegal algebraic move, and I'll show you why that actually works in a, in a minute. All right. Second step, factor this new trinomial. So this trinomial that we just wrote, we're going to factor this. And this is going to be pretty easy because this, now we have a lead coefficient of just 1. So we're down to the basic. So if you need to review the basic factoring, go back to that. So that would be x plus 8 and x plus 3. All right, so now that we've done that, step 3, we're going to replace the x's that we just came up with, okay, those, with... Uh, the original leading coefficient, so that in our example it was 2, times x. Okay, so we're going to do, instead of x, we're going to put 2x in those spots. Okay, and again, this makes no sense until I show you why that works. All right, but that's what you do. And then we're going to factor any GCF that we need to factor. So you see in this first um, parenthesis in this first factor that we can divide out by a 2 here, right? In this one, there's no common factor in the second one. So how that looks, how I have a 2 and then I have x plus 4, this one didn't have anything factored out, so it's just 2x plus 3, okay? Remember, this is 2 times this parenthesis times this parenthesis, all right? So all of those are multiplied, so we're still all in factors. And then our last step is to divide by the original leading coefficient. Our original leading coefficient was this 2, so we're going to divide by the 2. Now, when I say divide by 2, remember I said these are each divided, so I'm not dividing each single factor by 2, I'm dividing the whole thing by 2. So this cancels with that first one, and that's it. I don't divide the 4 by the 2, I don't divide the 2x plus 3 divided by 2, I don't do that. Okay, it's just 1 and done. You only divide it once and then you're left with this. And this would be the correct factor version of that original trinomial. Okay, so let's do one more just to get the process down. All right, so we multiply A times C, and then I don't write that original lead coefficient. So this is gonna be X squared minus seven X plus 10, right? Then I'm going to factor. So I know this is x and x. I need two numbers that multiply to give me 10, add to give me 7. Now it's a negative 7, so they both should be negative. So that's going to be 5 and 2. Yes? Then we're going to go in and replace these x's with our coefficient times x. So each of those are going to be 5x minus 5. And then this is going to be 5x minus 2. Then we're going to go through look for any common factors. So here I have a common factor of 5. Over here I don't. It's just 1. So here I'm going to have 5 and then x minus 1. Over here I'm just going to have 5x minus 2. All right. And then my last step is going back to what did I originally multiply? What was my original coefficients? That was 5. So I'm dividing this whole thing by 5, which cancels there, so what's left is just these parentheses. Okay, so that's the AC method. Crazy, I know. It's math magic. No, here's why. 
<laughs> How can this illegal move result in a correct answer? Is this really valid? And if so, why does it work? Here's why it works. Okay. These steps that we just did are actually shorthand for a more complicated process. All right, so here's the actual process. Here's the math, the mathematics behind it. So if we take what we originally started with, so ignore that 2 for a minute. We originally started with 2x squared plus 11x plus 12. So we're multiplying the entire expression by 2. Okay, the lead coefficient. So you look at this lead coefficient and you say, okay, I'm going to divide, multiply the whole thing by 2. All right, so we distribute. So I'm getting 4x squared plus 22x plus 24. The reason we decided to multiply by 2 is so we could do this next step. Instead of writing this as 4x squared, I'm going to write it as a quantity squared. So 4x squared is the same thing as 2x times 2x, right? So I'm going to write that as the quantity 2x squared, all right? Same thing with here. Instead of thinking of this as 22x, I'm thinking this of this as 2x times 11, all right? So that's where we're getting that. So it's just playing around with ways we can write that. I know this would not necessarily be your first thing to think of. But that's what us mathematicians do, right? We, we come up with creative ways to solve a problem. All right, so now here's, here's what we're, we're going to do, and you'll see this many times in algebra and calculus is called uh, using a variable substitution. So taking something more complex and replacing it with just a single variable. So instead of writing it with these parentheses and 2x, instead of doing that, we're just going to replace that with the m. Okay, so instead of having 2x here and 2x here, we're replacing them with m's. Okay, so m squared plus 11m plus 24. Okay, and then we're factoring. <clears throat> and notice that we still have m's because that's our variable that we use to factor. And then all we're going to do now is we're going to replace those m's with the two x's that we know we said was equal to m. Right? We said 2x is equal to m. And then now we're just factoring out the common factor. Okay, so if, if we divide each of these by 2, this one doesn't have a common factor. That's where we end up with the 2. All right, but remember, way back in the beginning, we multiplied by that lead coefficient. We multiplied by 2. So to undo that first step, we have to divide by 2. Okay, and that's where we get that last step in our process. Okay, so that's really what's happening there. Um, so if you like that, you're free to use it. Just go ahead and try to do this one on your own using the AC method. Just practice it to see if you like it, and then I'll show you my answer. Okay, so you can see at the bottom here that I'm getting the answer 2x minus 3 times 3x plus 7. I'll scroll up so you can see my process. So I did my a times c. That gave me negative 126. So you might have had to use a calculator to get your factors. I, I was definitely going to miss the 7 times 18. So just be aware that sometimes you might have to break out your calculator. Um, so, But negative 9 and 14 are how we factor that. I replaced it with the 6x. Do you notice here how in both of these factors, you could uh, they had a greatest common factor? So in this first one, we had a 3. The second one, we had a 2. If that happens to you, what I recommend is combining these constants together as one single constant in front. So you see how I did 3 times 2 is 6. And then I kept the parentheses there. That way, you know exactly you've only got one constant to worry about. You're not worrying about, oh, what am I dividing 6 by? So you don't want to get fractions or anything. All right, so then you can see when I divide by 6, that cancels out. Okay, so just some tips there. So there you go. You've got um, the last strategy. So let's kind of review what we've done. We did an intro, and we did uh, GCF factoring. And then what we did is just some basic trinomial factoring. That's when we had lead coefficient just equal to 1. And then I showed you the difference, the difference of two squares. 
the special pattern. And then we moved on to uh, factoring trinomials where this is not one, right? And, and underneath there we have the uh, guess and check or trial and error. And then I showed you factor by grouping. And then we had the uh, area or box method. And then we had the last one, which was the AC method. And really all of these last three, you really have to do that process. That first step is doing a times C, and then, you're, and then you're finding factors of that A times C. So if you don't like doing A times C, then you might want to stick with the trial and error, okay? So just, just some FYIs for you. So there's a lot going on with factoring. So if you have never seen this before, this is a lot, and you'll need a lot of practice to get that down. Okay, and I can give you lots of practice and show you many, many places and websites you can do. So this is going to be appearing throughout all of geometry. It won't go away. So let's get this mastered in the beginning, and then we don't have to worry about it through the rest of the, of the year. All right, thanks.